Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to simply define what are weep holes and how do they work when it comes to thresholds and door bottoms. So first of all, here's a picture of a typical steel door, and even in a rainy, uh, even in a post-rainy condition, uh, you can tell everything around here is dry, except for the areas down here below where it's continuing to be wet, and that contributes to the problem of steel frames, especially steel doors, rusting at the bottom of the door. And if you ever notice hollow metal doors that have been installed for a year or two, they will start to develop surface rust at the bottom of the jam, is where I always notice it first. So why is indeed that the case? Well, that's probably not going to be answered by weep holes in thresholds or door bottoms, but the prevent the prevention of rusting in steel doors and frames is greatly enhanced by weep holes. So here we go. Uh, Dorbin is the first manufacturer of weather stripping that I became familiar with in the late later 1980s. And Dorbin has manufactured since the 1930s weather stripping, believe it or not, 1930s. Um, None of their thresholds, however, show a weep hole, but because they were the first that I was familiar with and was taught what a weep hole was, I'm going to start with this. Here is a relatively, any, any of these thresholds are good examples. Not, not, not as much this one, because it doesn't have a trough like these two do, or like this one does, or like this one or this one. So what happens in a weep hole arrangement is the manufacturer will literally drill a small hole through this area. Literally put a small hole here. Probably two or three of them. Then in the face of this threshold they're going to file a notch with a square end file. With just a you know a bastard type file and turn it on its end and make a small notch, probably two of them, in the face of the threshold. Okay, The concept is any water that were to get inside of here is going to go through the weep hole, travel along, and then hopefully out. Now, first thing, manufacturers like Dorbin and Pemco and others will offer water pans made of either aluminum or brass. Don't mix your metals. If you have an aluminum threshold, use an aluminum water pan. If you have a bronze threshold, like this one, B, use a brass water pan. You don't want to mix the metallurgies on that stuff. Um, that is literally a piece of sheet metal that will be shaped with a small little wing on it, then will come straight across and sit underneath here. That's to help any water that hits it to not pool and collect and degrade whatever the natural sill is below the threshold. So you've got the concept of a weep hole and a water pan. Pemco actually in their catalog shows what the concept looks like. And in fact, this threshold here is a great example of a weep hole arrangement. Now, when I look at this type of threshold, I say, well, how in the gospel is the water going to get inside of here? This is an interlocking threshold. So the door is going to swing in. There's going to be a hook strip that's going to be underneath here. Water is never going to get to that. Okay. I mean, I suppose it could, but water is not really going to get to that because of the mechanical link. Well, in this scenario... It's still highly unlikely any water is going to get back here. Wouldn't you agree? But before we discover why that is, this photo here, this image here, kind of represents the water pan concept. You don't want any water down here. Integral, integral water return slope. That's what the water pan does. Kicks it straight on out. Thank you. You're gone. So... The next concept, so they can put weep holes into thresholds. And this is what it looks like. Well, we can also put weep holes into door bottoms. So imagine a weep hole being drilled, and this company is called Combo, 
Combo Aluminum Products, and they make a whole slew of weather stripping. Well, imagine if you put a weep hole in here. You might say to yourself, how is the water going to get underneath there? Maybe drill it back here. Maybe put it up here. Okay, so door bottoms can have weep holes as well. Well, here's what happens. And again, this is what you're looking to prevent. You want the water, water to run off and run out. This has been dry for quite some time, but it's still wet down here. So that tells me that there's water pooling inside of here, is what it tells me, or collecting. Here's, here's what happens, and here's why you would want weep holes in both scenarios. This is an image I found online. I don't know whose work this is, whose building it is, where it's located, doesn't matter. So what happens is this wall above here could be five, eight feet above here. It could be 50 feet. It could be 200 feet. We don't know what's above here. It could be more than that. But the surface area above, and it, it's obviously not. You can see probably what the roof is. So what do you have here? You've got every bit of four feet would be my guess. But the point is, is all of this is surface area. Okay? This is all surface area. If you go to the movie theaters, you know that those are single floor buildings, single story buildings, with the exception of those crow's nests where they go up a set of stairs to, to the projector rooms. But those brick block construction wall heights are three stories tall. That makes up a tremendous amount of surface area. You've got, you know, let's just say three foot by whatever that is. So right here, if this was four, if th let's say that this is five feet, I mean, you've got 15 square feet of area for water to collect. Water is going to collect here. Rain's going to hit here. That rain is going to come and trickle down. Okay. This obviously has a transom up above. But that water is going to trickle down. It's going to hit the lintel, which is that piece of steel that's there. It's going to lip inside. It's going to hit the face of the frame, and that's a four-inch header. Uh, well, I don't know that it's a four-inch header. Could It looks like it's bigger than two-inch. Anyway, that water is going to come. It's going to hit the seam between the underside of the header and the top of the door. I promise you at that point, it's then going to make its way and pool on top of the door. The top of the door does not have a, a a waterproof seal. Water is going to collect inside of there. It's going to come, it's going to pool down, and it's literally going to pool and collect in the bottom of the door. And that is where your weep hole in the door bottom is going to come into play. That's where the weep hole in the door bottom is then going to permit you to communicate to the weep hole system in the threshold as well. Okay. Th what you really see here is that evidence. Now this is a fairly new installation based on what I can tell because there's no rust down here. But it, next time you go through a drive through of a, your, your local coffee uh, company, look at their back steel door. If it's more than a couple of years old, it's going to have rusting, surface rust down here. Every time a hollow metal door is replaced for rusting, it is rusted at the bottom of the door. And that's where you're going to see people order things, order door bottoms that are going to be like the Pemco 221 variants. Why? They're going to sleeve this over the bottom of that rusted door and try to get some more life out of it. Well, that's cool. <laughs> I'd want a weep hole here so it can at least run out because Water's not going to get in this way, but it's going to pull from the top of the door, collect at least this way. It has a chance of exiting and not pooling and collecting in the bottom of that door. Okay, and that's that's really what happens. Um, the other problem is you you will get to a point where it will rust from the inside, obviously, because that's where the water is coming from. But the problem is. In, in steel door construction, the, you know that the exterior of the door is prime coated. It's ready to be painted. 
or it could be finish painted from the factory. But what's not painted is the inside face of this steel, okay? A steel door, depending on how it was manufactured, is really nothing other than, is really nothing other than a pan like this, and then another pan like this. Two pieces of sheet metal that are brought together, and sure, it'll have reinforcing in here in the whole nine yards, but that's your door. Then they'll weld here, you know, if it's a square edge seam door like that. There's other ways to build them. The point of the matter is, the core is generally communicating to the inside face of the steel, of the door. However, the inside face of the steel is not prime coated or surface protected from rust because the adhesive won't stick to prime coat. So the inside face of the door is generally bare metal. So that's where you're going to have this problem of the water coming down and it just destroys the integrity of the door because it is touching steel. The adhesive is breaking down. The core material is breaking down. And you can literally take this corner and this corner when that door is ready to be replaced and literally twist it because it's all fallen apart. And I believe that having a weep hole in your threshold system and in your door bottom system uh, is not only a good idea, but it will help preserve the, or at least substantially lengthen the life expectancy of the opening. That's what a, what a weep hole system is. If you have any questions on weep holes or care to contribute, please feel free to reach out to us. Thank you.